A few months ago, I stumbled across JavaScript Anywhere, an app for iOS. And I found it quite useful for simply trying out different things I wanted to experiment with JavaScript. Um, obviously, if I'm at my computer, I'm able to do it there. But when I'm not, and I have my iOS device, I can quickly try a particular concept which I'm working on. Now, JavaScript Anywhere has been around for a long time, several years as a matter of fact, but I just discovered it. So if you're in the same boat, you might find this interesting and, and find it helpful. Now, they have a very simple website. It simply has some FAQs and uh, some other things on it, so not a lot of details about how to use it. So in this video, I'll just demonstrate each of the features that JavaScript Anywhere comes with. Now, you can download it from the App Store. And then once you open it, it looks like this. Now when you first open JavaScript anywhere, this is what the screen will look like. I'm demonstrating this on an iPad. Obviously with reduced real estate you would have on an iPhone, things will look a bit different. But on an iPad, on the left hand side you have a list of projects. The first time you use JavaScript Anywhere, there will be one project listed and it will be called Hello JavaScript Anywhere. And the code within the JavaScript file will look like what I have here. There's the HTML file and the CSS file. So on the right hand side of your screen, you have three tabs where you can access JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Also on that same toolbar at the top, you have an arrow button that allows you to run what you're testing. So now first, those of you that may not be familiar with what's going on with the JavaScript that comes by default, this is simply adding an event listener to the window object. And that event listener is checking for the load event, which means the HTML page has loaded and is ready for you to manipulate. So if you're familiar with jQuery, it's similar to the ready function. So once that load event fires, it calls the function we have passed in as a callback. And so right now, all that function is doing is it's doing a query selector on a div with an ID of test, and then it's setting the inner HTML equal to JavaScript anywhere. That's all it's doing. Now, Generally, when I use JavaScript Anywhere, I just use it because I want to test something. I want to try something out. And I'm not at my computer, so it's easier to just pull out my iOS device and try it there. So let's say that I had just learned about the toggle method that's a part of the class list on, on DOM nodes. And I want to just try it out. So that's what I'm going to do. So first, I'm going to create a variable here and set it equal to a portion of this first line. I want to use this same test div. If I jump to the HTML, there's our, our test div. I want to use it for a couple of things. So the first line, I'll assign that to a variable. And then the second line, I'll go ahead and set the inner HTML as was happening previously. Now I'm going to use set interval just to test this toggle method. I want to toggle between two colors, red and blue, on that div and see how it works. So first I enter set interval. And the first argument of set interval is a function. This will be the callback function, the function that will be called each time a certain amount of time expires. So I will define that function and do it as an anonymous function. And I want to change the class list for test using the toggle method. And so the first 
style I want to toggle is red. And then I will do a second one and toggle blue. So basically toggle, if the class exists, it removes it. If it doesn't, it adds it. It's that type of functionality. So that's what I want done with my function. I will close my function. Now the second parameter of the set interval is the amount of time. And so I want every second for this to change. So I'll enter 1000. Then I'll close the parens on my set interval method. And then a semicolon. So there's my JavaScript I want to try. I just noticed that I spelled blue wrong, so let's go up and change that. Now notice what I've done on HTML I did before I started recording this. I simply added a class of red to that div. And then also notice on the CSS, I created two styles, red and blue. And I also commented out the default one that, that comes with. So the test div was already defined with a color of gray. And I commented that out. All right, let's go ahead and try this. I'll press the play. And sure enough, it's moving between red and blue. So I was able to try out the toggle method and see how that works. So that's the kind of thing that I, I use it for. Now, so I can show you some of the other features that are available. Let me go ahead and stop this. I'll press the X button in the upper right hand corner to do that. You can also simply press on one of the tabs to stop it as well, and it will go to that tab and also stop it from executing. Now, if while I was executing this, I wanted to see the console, I can do that. There is a button down at the bottom. It looks like a greater than symbol and then an underscore. I can simply press on that and the console opens. Stop that from running again. Now there are several buttons on this bottom toolbar you may be interested in. Starting from the right hand side, there's an email button that would allow you to email the project to yourself or to somebody else. Basically, it just prompts you to enter an email to send it to and it automatically attaches the files. Next, you can import JavaScript, HTML, and CSS from a location. I've entered a location in here already. This is the All Things JavaScript website. And I've entered a JavaScript file, an HTML file, and a CSS file. And when I click Save, those would be imported into the project. So usually you want to do this with a brand new project. You can also add images if you'd like to work with images in your project. You can lock a project if you don't want to accidentally make make changes, you can go ahead and lock that. Now this link button is kind of interesting. If you want to test what you're doing on another device, you can go ahead and run the server. And once it starts running, it tells you where the server is running, the IP and the port number. And then you can enter that in a browser on another device to see how it looks. Finally, you can export projects to Dropbox and import them from Dropbox. So I've already exported one to Dropbox. So if I click on import, you can see that I could load that into the current project. And there are settings available with JavaScript anywhere if you want to change the text, color, background color, and so on. That's all possible as well. So that's just a quick introduction to JavaScript Anywhere. I find it fun for testing different ideas if I'm not by my computer, and perhaps you'll find it helpful for the same reason. For more videos on JavaScript, subscribe to our channel. You can also find additional resources at our website at allthingsjavascript.com. Thank you for watching.